Hey guys, how's it going? This is Nat Nato, and welcome to a little holiday special. Now, uh, I would call it a Halloween special, but this isn't actually a scary game. This is a, uh, a visual novel, and it's called Juniper's Knot. Uh, I found it on iOS, and I played it, and I absolutely loved it. And I went and researched it, and found out that it was a computer game, so... I thought, why the hell not download it and play it for you guys? Because if you haven't heard of it, this is going to be a new experience for you. And it's just beautiful. The music, the visuals, everything about it is just absolutely amazing. So even if you have heard of it, uh, I'm going to narrate it. So before it doesn't really have, um, it doesn't have any voice. So it'll be an interesting little thing. I'm just going to quickly turn the display speed down. So, without further ado, let's get into this. Much of these stone walls and floors have weathered into dirt and dust, revealing the foundation. Much of the ceiling, too, has crumbled to the ground layering in flecks and bits. Below me now is such tired soil. Tired, tired soil. Pah! There isn't much to do here but burn dead leaves and wait. Watch the smoke rise, curl up fresh and tickle the inside of your nose. Dull as bones it is. But what can I do? I'm stuck. Some might say cursed. I'd rather say bound. I don't like to think very much about it. I kneel to the small fire I've started, taking up a few embers and loam into my palm. It's the glow that stirs me and reminds me that my heart is still beating. I bring the scorched earth close to my face, shut my eyes and breathe it in. I taste it and spit. It's barren. I'm probably going to wait here forever. What? There's an unnatural rustling not far off. West? West, aye. What is it? Who? Another? Here? My eyes sharpen and my ears perk up. I feel my heart thumping in my throat. Should I be forward? Give a call. Would that work? Cry out, plead. Help, help, damsel! A fool sort of lie. Would that work? No, go still. Listen, just listen. Whatever it is, it's right busy about here. Noises tumbling rough from old doorways. Chests wide open. Shops and homes are explored. A scavenger, then. Someone found this place? Tch. Hmm. Hearing these sounds is just... odd. It shouldn't be odd, but it is. Strange. I should remember such sounds. Oh. The noise is getting closer. Is it? I'm imagining this? No, no. It's surely in the manor now poking around the kitchen and lounge? I decide, on the chance that it will find its way to the ballroom, to stand. I take a good posture and await this new company. And to my surprise, it, he, shows up at the door within the next minute. A boy? A man? What kind of thing's this again? He's carrying a pack and has a bottle on his waist. Maybe he's a traveller, then. Doesn't look like he's noticed me yet. He's just wandered in, stare adrift. After a few steps, I catch his eye. He moves a little closer to look me in the face, and then some more to see my feet. He stops there. He's staring now, and doing nothing more. Come here! 
As if realizing something, he stiffens. His heart beats loud in the air. I need your help, so come on, come here. He doesn't bend. What is he up to? What does he think this is? I speak again, this time with a little bite. The hell are you waiting for, tit? Oh, oh, have I been rude? Have I been rude? Oh well, you're cordially invited to move your dumb legs. For the first conversational words I've spoken in centuries, they could have been worse. He shakes with fear and stands back. Uh, fiend? Slow, are you? What does it matter? What are you pissing your trousers for? Get over here! Uh, no way! You'll eat my soul! Oh, what? A smile cracks along my face. <laughs> your soul? Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. When was it last that I laughed like this? I grin. I grin so brightly, watching, chuckling while he shrinks back a little, and a little more. Eh, 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 now, person, person, you're just perfect. A jester, won't you lend an ear? Afore I e eat your soul. <laughs> At my laughter he glares, stealing himself, he answers me. You're not catching me, demon, you got that? I've read the stories. I'm tired, but I ain't stupid. Am I that famous? Tch, mercy, I left a mark. You know what I mean. Hell, I really don't. Fiends, devils, demons, all of ya. I know how it is. And how is it? You're all foul, and you try to trick people. Trick you? Trick? <laughs> oh. oh, I really just can't believe it. What's happened in all the years I've been gone? And what if I'm not trying to trick you, person? What if I just want to hear you? Just want to hear me? What the hell? Like, what's it you've read, lad? Do tell. I'd love to hear a story. I'm a little bored. I think I'll just leave. You turn tail on a bloodthirsty, wicked fiend? Look, I know something dirty when I see it. You ain't fooling no one. Ha ha ha. He's so precious. Alright, alright, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you. I, like all us fiends, devils, demons, am plainly trying to win your extravagant soul through my dastardly wit. Honest and true, I'm a rook. But please, please, at the least, tell me of what you've read. Why the hell do you want to listen to me so much? Because I am bored, and your voice, ah, your voice, I swoon. Bah, horse feathers. I really do want to listen. Would you be so kind? Ah, he's genuinely considerate. Such a delight. I do want to hear him. In the meantime, I look him over a little more finely. He's got a fair face, but through the fabric of his shirt I can see that he's muscled. A surprise. Even the soldier boys seemed a little bit lean back in the days I rode at Marla. I wonder what it is he does. He smells like an animal. In the most pleasant way that can be said. It's quite good. Also, he has the faintest scent of watercress about him, mingled with black oil. What a peculiar lad. Uh, hmm. I'd really better not stick around. I guess I can tell you some things, though, uh, yeah, I guess I can tell you. Long as you stay put, you hear? What's keeping me from you is more powerful than I care to challenge, person. Yeah, right, whatever. Here's a story. One from a book I read a lot when I was little. Pfft. Oh, pardon, pardon. I find it very hard to think of you any littler. Quiet! 
There was a cobbler in Whitaker who had nothing to eat. He was poor and dirt, and he didn't have a girl, and it made him real sore. He didn't have a girl? A dame, a sweetheart. He didn't have a wife. Ah, uh, continue. While he was walking down an alley, he met this man. He had on a dark coat with a hood that covered his eyes, and the cobbler couldn't make heads or tails of it. He stopped and asked the cloaked man if he'd like his shoes worked on. The... That's stupid. Why would he do that? Because he needed all the work he could get. Well, he should have gone around ruining shoes if he was... if what he needed was work. The cloaked man said he wasn't wearing shoes, but he could use a new pair. But obviously the cobbler's a cobbler, so he don't make shoes. He tells him that. And the cloaked man says, actually, I could really use some new shoes. The cobbler looks at him weird, and says he can get them if the guy's sick. And the cloak man says, would you do that? I'd do something for you then. And the cobbler says, like what? And the cloak man says, perhaps anything. He leans forward darkly as he says this. I smirk at the action. Now, I know what you're thinking. I've heard this one before and know how it goes. Well, you don't. Because the cobbler says, perhaps not. And he walks away. How exciting. But here's the thing. While he's walking, he notices the alley's longer than usual. He doesn't think about it, though. Thinks he's just tired from work and keeps walking. But while he's walking, he sees another man in a cloak. He stops and asks if the man could use his shoes getting worked on. And the cloaked man says he doesn't have any shoes. The cobbler stops and looks at him and says he'd better get moving. The cloaked man says he could really use some new shoes. And while he's moving, you know, I nod. He keeps running into this man in a cloak, and he can't find the end of the alley. Actually, every time it takes longer and longer till he sees the man in the cloak. On the eighth time he runs into the man, he stops and asks, What's the game? And the cloaked man looks at him with yellow eyes says he could really use some new shoes. For what? the cobbler says. I don't know, the cloaked man says. Perhaps anything. What do you want? The cobbler knows exactly what he wants. But fiends have yellow eyes and he knows a fiend. Tch, nonsense. I actually sighed hearing that. So what you're telling me, if this story's anything good to adhere to, is that I might have already trapped you. Dunno. I don't think you did. Why not? He shrugs. I don't think you did. Hmm. I really must say, your manner of storytelling is queer. What? It's strange. Oh. I don't know. It's just very strange to my ears. I guess. How's your story end? The cobbler gets desperate and makes a pact with the fiend to get new shoes by the next day. The fiend will give him gold for him to do that. So the fiend gives him the gold, but he doesn't make it. The fiend traps him in the alley so he can't leave. His soul is taken and he's damned. The fiend eats his soul and leaves the alley for a farm. A uh, farm? Yeah, I know. I snort. That's comedy. I think it's supposed to mean something, but... Uh, point is, don't get caught up with fiends no matter what. You're getting caught up with a fiend right now. Well, you don't feel right. I... what? He shakes his head. Nothing. I look at him and try to figure him out. Figure out his opinions, and his story. In the time he's told it, he seems to have taken another idea of me. I'm not sure why that is, either. I appreciate you telling me that story. 
Don't mention it. So opaque. You still wary of me? Yeah, a little. I frown. Well... Do you want me to tell you another story? The unsolicited offer throws me. Is he really asking? But no. If I'm too... eager, I can't ask for that. No. I pause. No, I'm fine. If you say so. I'm gonna go now. Go? Yeah. I have to go, so... I'm going. Uh... He begins to turn around. Stay! Please stay! Please! I won't take your soul, honest, I won't! And then, like an idiot, I move my hand out, reaching for him with a singular wanting. I move past the second meter, past this circle's edge with my fingers, and withdraw with a start as they set a fire. Dropping to my knees, I scream. I cry out and howl, clutching the flames and smothering them. Tears crawl down my face, and I snarl with pain. I shut my eyes and moan. I hear him step a bit closer. You're stuck there? Looking up at him from the ground, I feel my teeth chattering. Oh no, I know why I want him to stay. Yes, I know. To rend him. Because as if, as if it just wasn't so funny enough that vines swept down from the walls and grass is borne through stone so close, just outside this putrid circle. Now there's a human, breathing before me. Comedy. Everywhere but here, but near to me, to my desolating blood. These years have damned me, cut and clawed beneath my skin. Scars invisible, but nevertheless blighting. I hate it. I hate it. hate so much. I hate the feeling it gives my heart, and the strength it takes in kind. I hate it! My flesh heats, and I look away from him. Looking into his eyes enrages me. How long have you been there? Long enough to beg. Long enough, you hear? Too long I've been in this stinking pile. It doesn't matter to you. I want to know. Well, I don't want to tell, I... Uh, sorry, miss? Miss? I take a look at my clicking, stuttering hand, my sight still blurred with tears. It's sizzling. Small blazes dance between the fingers. I take my tongue to it, soothing the burns. You're a bold one, I eh? Calling me a flap? Uh, what? Huh? No, no, you're... you're no flapper, lady. It means something different now. Miss is just what you're supposed to call older ladies, out of respect. Lapping the flames from the back of my hand, I glance at him. That right. Are you okay? I suck my ring finger and squint. What's that? All right. Fine? Is that okay? All right. <laughs> All right. Aye, aye. I am a fiend, yes. Heal fast. Though I can still feel it snap and pop snap and pop in the joints. I whistle cool air through my digits and take myself from the ground. Are you going to stay? I... I could. Uh... oh. Thank you. I'm actually lost right now. Ah, ah, lost, is it? Lost, ha! <laughs> That's a sweet irony. Don't look so addled, person. The irony's quite obvious here, isn't it? He squints. Think. After all, I cannot even be lost. Forever and ever, I'll know where I am. 
and where I am is... stuck. I laugh again, but he doesn't find it funny. He doesn't seem to find it much of anything at all. I quit it, wiping away a figurative tear. Ha, <laughs> uh, uh. I know this place so intimately, it'd redden your face. He jerks and gives his head a shake. I if you... Hmm? Uh, uh, if you know where this is, do you know where's more? Ah, so earnest. Don't know what more is. I know mores. Mores? Aye, mores. Mores, you follow? I don't know what those are. My, my, ain't this a right dizzy jig we're dancing. Time's making fools of us both. <laughs> his look's a bit hazy, as though he's having a hard time keeping his eyes fresh. I turn my head silently. What's more, person? Where I was born, live. A town, a new town, city think it's been there for a while. That ride. He doesn't speak and I glance over just quickly enough to catch him at the end of nodding. Did you know? This place was a moor for a time. Miss, I don't know what... what is that? It is a dead place. A wet place. I too was born in a moor. Can't your stomach read a mood? Bleeding hell, I was about to tell a tale. Sorry. You're hungry, is it? Starvin. Us fiends, here, we only eat souls, and only for pleasure. Quit joking. Joking? Hey, you got any food? What you blithering on about now? I look like I got food? I don't got any food, idiot. However, here. I thrust out my hands, just before the barrier, palms up. Give me the chestnuts in your pack. I smell them. He hesitates. Why? So I can gobble them up. What do you think? I'll cook them for you. They're not long from the branch or the ground, smells like. You haven't cooked them? And nor have you eaten them. You prefer the taste of them cooked? He nods, slowly. I twitch my fingers, waiting. Is there something you want, uh, for this? Your company for the morning, till noon. That's it? I nod. Okay, deal. His words spoken like a knell. It resonates deeply, echoing and shakes ash from the walls. Startled, the boy covers his mouth. Deal, was it? <laughs> I smile. Here. Did I just... I, you made a pact. Mm. Shaking his head, he sighs. Wordlessly, carefully, he takes off his pack and opens it up. Withdrawing a bushel of nuts in two hands, he moves forward. I look down at him, still waiting. And with steady movements, he brings his hands to mine. He holds my gaze, and I don't move at all. But I do think. I think, wait, couldn't I just... Couldn't I just, you know, quickly just? My hands tense, but it ends with a thought. He drops the heap into my palms. My fingers curl around it. Again, I turn up my lips. Seeing this, he hops back. Give me a moment. I take all but one into my left hand, holding the last between my right thumb and forefinger. Opening my mouth, I bring it between my teeth and puncture it with one of my fangs. I bite through the shell, making a rough cut from one end to the other, and take it out. 
Observing the inner flesh of it, I spit out the shreds. Satisfied, I go on to carve the second, third, fourth, and so on. When I've finished, I hold the chestnuts aloft and make a hearth of my hand. This'll take a while, person, but not so long. Might we talk some? Uh, sure. Then have a seat. Where did we leave off before your stomach so rudely interrupted? He sits, chin on his knees and eyes half-lidded. More something? Ah, yes. I'll tell you a story about moors, in return for yours. Though, rather than a story, a chat'd be nice, I Save you a story for a bit later. What do you want to talk about? Moors. Oh, right. My moor. Eh, mine. There really isn't much to say, come to think of it. You said you were born there? Aye, like all fiends, I was born in waste. You've read about us, eh? About how we make barren anywhere we stand, unconsciously drain life from Earth for our sustenance. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Pallid land and caligness loft, air crawling low and damp with miasma, the path of plants choked sterile. I feel my face twisting to scowl. Sounds, uh... It sounds hideous. I know, because it is. Did you grow up there? <laughs> a neat question. Aye, aye, I did. Had a mother and a father. Always got me wondering. Is this where I'll be when I get old? A bloody moor? Huh. <laughs> Guess not. You left it, then? Left it for many places. What was it like growing up there? Tedious. Maybe I shouldn't have brought this up at all, I... You just don't want to talk about it. That's okay. No, no, it's not a matter of okay. There's just not much of anything to talk about. It's all very colorless. What about yours? My what? Your more. Oh, it's not really anything special, just your typical city. Typical to me's not the same to you. Well, it's big, loud, streets are packed with folks, lots of smoke and brick. My ma and pop, run, uh, ma and pop run a farm near there, cause they're crazy. Oh, is that where your scent's from? M my scent? You smell like herbs and horses. It's quite adorable. You smell like black oil, but I'm not sure where that's from. The city's pretty modern. I have to lift canisters of oil from place to place every Wednesday. Oh, tough. He nods. Huh. <laughs> Very tough. Hey, knock it off, will ya? I do hard work. He kind of slurs his sentence, but is nevertheless determined to appear strong. I believe you. For your noble, strong efforts, I think it's time for your story. You ready? He shrugs. I clear my throat and loosen up my shoulders somewhat, poising my fire hand dramatically. Hmm? Did you know that stars sometimes act as rain in the night sky? You mean like a meteor shower? Hush. I've heard of it, but never seen it. Well, I've heard of it and know it, because I've seen it. Imagine this. Thousands, thousands of lights, and they all bleed along the cold, cerulean mirror above, slowly. Very slowly. Follow? They are so very slow, that as they make the long stretch out above you, you hardly notice their drag. It is an impeccable slowness. Imagine it. He nods, very slowly, and nods in another way, drifting into my memory. And flash! I flare the fire in my hand, the chestnuts wax, spitting, crackling. He jumps, the light catching in his eyes. Flash! Haha! <laughs> flash! Flash! 
With each of these words I stoke the flames. They lick up and dance wildly. Each single brilliant streak cuts through the lights, independent and free. And then, it dies. The magic in my palm fades in size. It pulses, fades, pulses, fades. His eyes glaze over. Like this. Like a heart's last beating. Death is quick to these stars. Straying my eyes from the light. Had they so turned, I hadn't noticed. I gaze upon the boy. Say, person, that's sorrowful to you. Huh? He thinks of an answer. It is. There isn't a right answer, person. You don't have to consider it like there is one. You think it's sorrowful? I do. That's interesting. Truly interesting. I end the fire, leaving the chestnuts to cool. I blow on them and breathe on them, ears twitching. These are done now. I hold them out to him. My end of the bargain's met, and you know what? I'll do you a favor. I'll go ahead and roast the rest of your chestnuts in my fire here. I motion to the dead leaves. I'll do this for free, for no deal. All that's left now is for you to stay. Squinting, he waits a little, but soon enough crawls forward on his hands and calves, his pack in tow. He stops at the edge of the circle and takes the fruits from my hand. He looks at me, wearing a kind of ugly expression. What? Settling onto his rear, he keeps looking at me but a bit less ugly. He seems to be wondering something. Eventually, he looks at the nuts in his hand instead, his face softening. He shells one and pops it into his mouth. His face flushes naturally. He chews a little. He pushes his pack into the circle with his foot, shifts back a few feet, and speaks. Which part of that was the story, miss? Well, look at that. You aren't entirely daft. I take up the bag from the ground, shake it a little. Doesn't smell like there's anything more in chestnuts in here. I open it up and check. Sure enough, finding the things in excess. Some with the burrs still on. Some still green. I toss those ones. I still rummage through it just in case there might be something of interest. There's not. Twas a preamble, twas. There's a story to it for certs. I told you I've seen this. Blinking, he nods. With a hollow sound, I crack one of the chestnuts apart in my mouth. I grow the fire at my feet and drop it in there. No more flashy tricks now. As I reiterate these actions, I speak to the boy. I was not alone with those stars, then. I was with another, miss. Dropping another into the fire, I watch it fall. My eyes lose some of their color. She was fair, young, and human. A perfect miss. Such a charming girl. We would dance together and sing, press close when unseen. I was fascinated with her, I think, and so, when she'd gotten melancholy, I brought her from town into those stars. I had the ache in my knees, knew the eventide would be crying, and had figured the beauty of it would settle her. The boy constricts his brow, chewing somewhat sadly. Oh, not to worry, not to worry, it did, it did. He swallows. I've never understood the custom of man. I've always been free-thinking and never bound to the thoughts of others. My actions that night? No, my actions altogether. None took kindly to it when she returned. What happened? What happened? Well, what well? After I took her back to town, she was plowed and beaten and beaten beaten and plowed and beaten and beaten 
until she could not move or breathe. The boy stares, a nut in his hands held stiff only so near to his parted lips. I buried her under the sky where I last saw her smiling. He closes his mouth into a frown. A century later, I returned to her spot and found an olive tree grown there. It was the sickest thing, gnarled and twisted it was. Furious, I raised the entire plant, its trunk, its bark, its branches and leaves. I scorched its roots. Would have torn out the roots, though refrained to not disturb her. Yet last I'd seen it remained alive, born fruit and uglier than before. Isn't that the most wonderful story one can tell? No! <laughs> I drop the last of the chestnuts into the leaves. Didn't you mess up the guys who did it? Mess up? You're a fiend! You didn't eat them? I didn't eat them. What happened to them doesn't matter to the story. I want to know. I don't want to tell. Ah, uh, seriously, miss? You know, when kids in the neighborhood mess with my kid brothers, I beat their faces in with a stick. That's what love is. It's taken care of your mates. Love? How would you figure from this tale that I fancied her? Well, obviously. It's my story, person, not yours. Come off it. It is an old story, and it is only a story. Stop. What? Man. He chucks the shell in his hand against the wall at his side, his expression sour. Fine. I was just entertaining you as I cooked. That's stupid. Bollocks. I don't want to hear that from your fool ass. Well, it's stupid. It's stupid. Forget it. What? What's this? You starting? Your stone's dropping now. Drop them any further. I'll tear them out. Tear out your tongue too, hear? Don't start with me. The boy freezes, hand hovering over his last chestnut. I'll rip your legs off, understand? Don't start with me. Last thing you need to be worrying over is your soul, since I'll rend you limbless if you start with me, and there won't be anything to be holding that soul at all. You start with me, I'll kill you. We clear, person? He quickly nods. I chuckle. You're a cute thing, aren't you? Quailing so tender. I can't move from here, person. You know that. Quivering, he speaks up. It, it just sounded pretty real. Did it? The boy lets out a loud sigh, shaking as it leaves him. Still vibrating with fear, he fumbles opening his last nut. There looks to still be bits of shell on the fruit, which he does not notice until it's in his mouth. He frowns a bitter frown, and calms down somewhat, now distracted by the taste. Some of these are finished, mind. I nod at the fire. I can toss them to you if you'd like, if you're still scared. N nah, I'm not. He rocks his head. I'm fine. But I'm pretty tired. Could you toss them anyway? Aye, aye, surely could. But shall? Also shall, but only if you agree to stay with me till sunset. It's noon already? It is. I sit down myself, lounging across from him. He stares his vision slowing and jumping and trying to focus. Eventually he squints, leveling his eye on me. Um, didn't you say you'd do it for free? Not this person, I said I'd cook these, and I am. He furrows his brow and frowns. Fine, I'll stay with you. Deal. The ballroom rattles with the sound. He isn't surprised by it. I smile again. So, is that what you are? Tired? It, yeah. 
I pick up a chestnut and throw it to him. He catches it, somewhat dazedly. How long have you been gone from your moor, person? I don't know. Two days? I throw him another. Ooh, isn't that a long time? No. It's a joke. Laugh. I don't want... If I laugh, it'd basically be like me laughing at you. Ha! <laughs> Answering with a greater joke instead of simply laughing. You really are a jester. A greater joke? I send one more his way. My existence. My predicament and existence together are the greatest joke in all history. I know this and I've missed half of it. Stop. Such a soft lad. I tilt my head and regard him. I keep leafing through my headbook for the memory of another like you, but I'm finding nothing. And I have so many memories, did you know? So many. So many travels, delights, regrets. A boy shouldn't be so soft. The world's so rough it'll shape him ugly. Languidly breathing, the boy eases into his arms a little more. Or it was. It was a rough place. If you don't know Moors, maybe this world's also soft now. It'd explain you. He blinks. Where I was raised, in my moor. That was quite rough. You know why I had laughed earlier, when you'd mentioned souls? You know why I joke of souls? He blinks. So many of us fiends are so obsessive over souls. It's just extraordinary souls, not unremarkable ones like the way yours feel. Have to look for those mature, spirited humans, their souls heavy with character and experience. He closes his eyes. A newborn soul, for example, won't do anything for you. It is special, though, yes. A newborn soul is quite pure. Quite pure, really. His back rises and falls. Pa sena pa eno. I don't know how to pronounce that, sorry if I got that wrong. Exquisite. I chuck a chestnut at his hair. It bounces off into the ground. He doesn't even flinch. I look into the fire. I gaze into the fire. The fire. These stupid things inside it. Piss! These stupid things! For a flash of a moment, I consider turning them to ash. But doing so would break my pact. No, it wouldn't. I still won't. I would rather burn this thing. This boy. Blasted. Should have grabbed him while he was at the edge. Would it have been so simple? Or do I need his agreement to exchange his life for mine from the circle? Am I forgetting? Am I forgetting the conditions? This boy be damned for rekindling hopes in me. Pressing my hands to my face, angry, roughly, I glare at him through parted fingers. I breathe out. If I could just lunge out from here and take him, I'd do it. I would. I growl. My body still feels the sensation of when I last forced myself through the barrier. The searing into my marrow, the purging of my eyes. And I still would. I'd still lunge out from here. I'd bloody well do it thrice to get out of this blighted circle. Why didn't I grab him before? He was at the edge. Why didn't you pull him in? Take him. I've forgotten so much. Oh, God. God to cry to heaven. I... What? Is this what it was like? Having passions? I want to die. I wanted to leave, but not anymore. This is passion. 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 I want to die. I'd bite my tongue again, burst blood and drown in myself, nails in my wrist, tearing and dig and tug and pull out my bleeding throat again. 
too. <laughs> Whining silence every day. Hey, what's what's a day? Two days, he said. What are days, huh? What are months? What are years? I've been here centuries. Centuries? Centuries! But was it longer? Did even centuries? Ah. Uh, quiet settles in, and the wind dashes the leaves. Scraping leaves, scraping leaves, scrape, howl, raindrops falling again, 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 embers in my hand, smoke. Sometimes I scream just to hear a voice again. <laughs> what happened to my life? My jaw is quaking, my eyes are warm. I wish you hadn't come here. Taking my hands from my face, I look at this peaceful. Peaceful, he's so peaceful, isn't he? Peaceful little cunt. Wake up! I throw another chestnut at him, missing. Wake up! Another and another. See me, Kerr? See me? This body? It does not grant the bloody peace of sleep. I take up a handful and toss them. I haven't slept a minute. Bastard, son of a bitch, two pence whore. I haven't slept a second. I have always been awake. Two days? You miserable wretch. Had I only been here two days, I'd drink a pup dry. Damn you, you hear? When you're dead, I'll find and spit on your grave. I'll, I'll plant an olive tree there, you rat bastard. I throw and throw and throw, missing, missing, missing. I hate you. I hate... Am I sobbing now? A fiend, sobbing. <laughs> Why? I drop my arms to the ground, crying in shakes. For the life of me, I can't remember a time ever crying. Mm. I'm feeling dizzy. I always feel dizzy when I'm waking up. My mouth's dry too. It's pretty awful. I smack my lips and rub my eyes. I'm still kind of tired. Uh, why was I tired? Ma! Oh yeah, got lost along the way to the Dales. Told Ma I didn't need that horse. He's so dumb. It would have been better just walking alone. Spooked by a dang partridge. Seriously? He must have bolted about half a mile before bucking me off. I opened my eyes and... it looks like fog. I rub them again and notice that lady from before sitting in front of me. Is she... asleep? Miss, uh, you asleep? No. Oh, I just figured since her eyes were closed and all. I can't sleep. I look at her weird and flinch. Something rolled out of my hair. It drops on the ground. Looks like a shell? Oh, it's one of those chestnuts. Why are these in my hair? I ruffle up the top of my skull, finding two more nuts and a burr. Whoa, did she throw these at me? I look at her and arch an eyebrow. Her cheeks are wet, her nose is red, and her ears are low. She looks like one of my kid brothers after falling off a curb. I can't really think of what to tell her. Maybe I'll just say what I always say. Did you do something bad? Tell me the truth. Piss off. Yikes. She's in that mood again. Um, listen. If you got mad because I... What did I just say? She says that like a fact instead of a question. I freeze up. Piss. Off. What did I do? I thought I was being nice. You want me out of here? She keeps staring at the floor. I'm a little scared now. What time is it? It doesn't look like sunset. It's not sundown yet. 
Uh, I don't think I c Leave. But the d deals Leave. If I mess up the... Leave. What am I supposed to do? I don't want to leave. If I mess up a deal with a fiend, I'm going to hell. Or is it worse? Oh man, if it's worse. I can't just walk out. Maybe if she... You're kidding. Whoops. Didn't want to say that. Good, it was quiet. See, my eyes are shaking, looking at her leaf pile. Because there aren't any chestnuts in it. The deal was, she had to toss chestnuts to me. And she did that. Sort of. I'm out of luck here. I can't leave, lady. It's lady now? Sorry, God. Leave. I want you to be leaving. Walking out of here, go and be damned, villain. I just look at her. I'm biting my teeth together and my heart's going wild. Burn in hell, dog. It's where you belong with all the blasted foul creatures of your ilk. Calm the hell down! She picks up her head from her arms and glares at me. J just calm down, alright? Calm down already. You really are an idiot. Well, well, you're crazy. Why the heck are you mad at me? Why'd you even talk to me, lady? What do you want? You're lonely, right? That's it, right? She starts standing up. Well, I'm not gonna let her look that far down on me. I'm standing up too. I'll even step up to her. I ain't letting her get the better of me. I ain't got no problem scrapping with you, lady. I'll knock your block off. You just swore against my family, and I ain't gonna stand for that, alright? Of course, I'm quaking in my boots while I say this. No, I swore against your race. I gulp and frown. Your entire, miserable, sin-hearted race. You know what I'd do if I got out of this circle? She steps forward. I step back. Yes or no? N no. She leans forward, just before what I'd guess is the barrier. I can feel her breathing on my face. It's cold and warm. Kill the whole lot of them. Kill the men, kill the women, kill the babies, lassies, lasses and lads just like you. To lads like you, I'll dive my hands into their guts, wrench out their innards, string by string and set them on fire. Uh, I... I'm crying, a little. I'm sorry, okay? I don't know what happened to you. I... I just wanted to know and be nice and... She leans back, standing up straight and breathes out. I swear I see flames coming out of her mouth, airy. Are you scared? I nod, fast. Why? I... 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 don't... I can't touch you! See? All of a sudden, she pushes her hand toward my face. My eyes widen. My whole body locks up. What am I seeing? I am trapped before here. Her skin's burning off in a bright yellow glow. I can see her muscles, charred black, turning inside out. Fire's blazing all over her hand. There's white in there. Her bones. I can't watch. Watch! I turn back from turning away. Your blood's evaporating! She grimaces and tears fill up at the sides of her eyes. One drops rolling down her cheek, and her hand shoots back to her like it's spring-loaded. I can't leave. Understand? Do you follow Sod for Brains? She holds up the twisty stump sticking to her wrist. This, right here, this is what I've known too long. Her hand starts coming back together. 
the melted parts splitting and the bones getting covered back up. There's this popping noise with everything. I go green in the face. I can't kill your people. I want to, but I won't be able to leave here, follow? What? Why are you trapped here? Would you believe me if I said it was a punishment? If I said it was an accident? An unjust imprisonment? Whatever I say, whatever you believe, it doesn't matter. I was trapped here before the world even had a concept of your... more. I was trapped here long, 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 long ago. And so, for reasons that no longer matter. I... I... I don't think you're speaking honest with me. How's that? Told you before, you need to calm the hell down. How... I swallow, hold my fists tight. How do I get you out of there? She can't believe what I'm saying. Uh, me neither. But I'm still gonna say it. She shakes her head. You've lost it. I shake my head. Nah, I still got it. I know what I just asked you. Tell me how to get you out of there. If you haven't lost it, you never had it in the first place. I suspected as much. You're touched, aren't you? Look, I got no idea what you're saying, but I'm still thinking straight. And dropping your G's. Shut your trap already! Hush and listen, you rude little pest. I shut my trap. You even know what you're saying. Remember what you're talking to. I just... just think that... I didn't just mess them up. Huh? I did not just mess up the men who raped her. I bore my nails hot into their eyes and tore off their faces. What? That's not all that I did. When I first saw her lying there, body warm only from the bodies of others, and eyes with no spark in them, I set the den where she died to flame. I came upon all who lived in her town and murdered them. I torched their homes and pulled the ribs from their chests, crushed their heads, snapped their bones, stripped off their flesh. If it could torment them, I did it. And in case you're wondering, you're all the same to me. I killed all kinds of you. One kind human, sex, age. I didn't pay it any mind when I slew them. Holy shit. Soon they gathered at the center of the town, where I'd first caught sight of her, as if to mock me. So I melted them all to the earth, slowly. On the night that she died, I erased that town from records. All my fighting spirits gone. Why'd you tell me that? You asked. I didn't want... You didn't have to tell me all the... the whole story. You're right, I didn't. But didn't want... didn't you want to know? What the hell is wrong with you? I'm a fiend. Holy... no! That's bull! Is that why you got put here? No. Really? Yes. Holy shit. I've done many things in my life. Things some find admirable, and others some find despicable. I've put a curse on a family for all their generations, saved a, gig a gaggle of slaves from the tyranny of their fellow man. I've ruined a marriage and I've restored another, slaughtered a town and rescued a child. I've done so many things. And all of those things I've mentioned, not a one of them is the reason I'm here. Y you forgot? Oh no, I remember it quite clearly. But as I said, the reason no longer matters. I just don't get it. You wanted me to save you, right? I swore that's what you wanted. But now you're telling me all these mixed up things, and what the heck am I supposed to think? What the heck do you want? You gone. I breathe out through my nose and close my eyes. Nah, 
Nah, there's no way. I shake my head again. You've got to be lying to me. I don't think all complicated, sure, but I know when someone's lying to me. Why the heck are you lying to me? I know you don't want me to leave. What happened to you? I look at her eyes. How long have you been in there? I don't know. I don't know anymore. You don't know? That's what I said. I... What the hell's up with that? That can't be right. All fiends got this knack for knowing the hour exactly. The second. It's famous. So, what the hell's it mean if they lose it? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, how much did you love that girl? I... I hear something click in her throat. She doesn't look like she wants to say. Shut up. I... I feel bad for her. This is goddamn weird, but it's like... She's so sad. Everything about this lady's sad. I mean it. She's just damn miserable. And pathetic. She's so... You really don't know how long you've been in there? Yes. I think you've been in there for long enough. I don't think you really want to kill anyone. Then you're a fool. Quiet. I had enough of that joke. Tell me how to save you. I reach out to her and grab her hand. That hand that got screwed up. And it's healed now. I hold on to it. Come on! She stares at me. She looks at my hand, holds it with both of hers, and squeezes. She locks her eyes with mine. I need to be switched with another life. That's the only way for me to leave. I put on my manliest face. I'm not going to switch with you. Listen. I keep her from saying anything else. I'm going to find another way, alright? What the hell could you do? I'll plant something in your place. Nothing can, uh, nothing can grow here. I am a fiend, eh? That... damn... right. How am I gonna... I shake my head. Doesn't matter, that. Land's gonna be fine once you're out, right? At least, that's what I think. That's what I've... read. Look, you've just gotta believe in me. I look up and finally notice that the sun is gone. You don't want me to leave anymore. I can feel that. She's really holding on tight. But believe in me. Let me go and I'll save you. She looks at our hands again. And she cuts into mine with her nail. Ow! I wince. Dang. Now, come on. Don't do this. I look at her face. She's still staring at my hand. Let me go. Come on. She wouldn't, right? Don't. Don't pull me. Stop pulling me. I'm trying to calm down my heart. I'm trying not to lose it. But it's hard when she's bringing my arm a little bit closer. And a little bit more. Come on. Come on, please. Trust me. She digs her nails into me again. Damn, ow, ow. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Please, please, let me go, please. Come on, let me go. Let me go. I whisper that, not thinking about it. My eyes are shut. I'm piss scared. I don't want to get stuck in there. I can feel her looking at me, and I breathe faster. I'm trying to be calm. I can feel my lips moving, pleading. And after a while, real slow, she does it. I open my eyes, shocked. She's let go of my hand, and is holding hers up now where mine was. And she's about to drop it. I toughen up and grab it up again. We make eye contact. Believe in me. Got it? She doesn't say anything. 
I let go of her hand and pick up my satchel from inside her space. We hold a look. I beg you, don't betray me. Please. I won't betray you. I promise. The walls don't shake, my voice don't boom. I take a step back and another one. And I run out of there. It's cold now. I'm actually shivering. The moon's high, the grass is glowing. It's dark, but beautiful. It's quiet like before, like always, right? It's just wind and dead leaves. Even animals don't walk through this place. I wonder how long it's been since people did. At least this is probably the first time someone's walked through here with a sapling in their hand. I step into the big room and look out ahead. I rub my thumb over a branch of the tree I'm carrying. I can see her there on the floor, her hands over her face. I know she can hear me, since whenever I move even a little, her ears flick. I walk forward. Wiping her nose with the back of her hand, she stands up and breathes out loudly. She opens her eyes, and I'm kind of surprised when I see them glowing. I stop at the edge of the barrier. She looks at me. You look a mess. Yeah, well... My belly growls and I sniff. It's pretty hard to dig out a tree properly with no real tools. Especially one like this. We both check out the sapling. Isn't that... Uh, yep. Yeah, an olive sapling. I didn't pick it since I wanted to make fun of you. Olive trees are strong. If there's anything that's going to take root and dirt like this, it's an olive. Right. Step back, I'm coming in. She does that after a second or two and I take... I walk into her place. Bending down, I hold up the olive to her. Take it. She does that, too, after thinking about it. I take a sharp rock out of my pocket that I picked up outside and stab into the ground with it, cracking the floor. It sticks pretty bad in there, but I can still yank it out. I do that and keep breaking up the earth. I can feel the lady staring and I know what she's thinking. Even if I'm a kid, I can still see the soil's pretty bad. My eyes as good as Mars at least. And this, definite, this lady definitely knows as good as me how it is for growing. If anything grows, it'll be with awful chances. Seriously, an olive's about the only thing around that might. Making matters worse, I ain't got very long before that sapling's as good as dead. The roots are good and all, but it's not. And honestly, I don't know the difference from a good sapling to a bad one. I sort of just went with my gut. So, knowing most of that, she's probably thinking of just walking out. That's what's gotta happen, right? Two living things get in, only one gets out. But I'm not gonna check on her and see if she leaves. It's not that I'm trusting her. I can't trust her, but... This is about all I can think of, getting her out without leaving me in, I mean. If I look at her, if I show her that I'm worried... That'd mess everything up. So I've got to keep at it. I've got to break up this spot. I stab and I pull and I dig, clearing out stones and dirt. I pile all the dirt up next to me. Gonna need it later, bad as it is. After a lot of effort, I lean back and look at the hole I made. Then slow, I turn to see if she's still there. And she is. I hold up my hand. She gives me the olive. I take it and open up my satchel, filled with wet, healthy soil I gathered while I was gone. I carefully transplant the sapling, putting some good soil over its roots and filling the hole back up with a proper mix of my collected stuff and the dirt from the foundation. Careful now. 
careful with the roots. Okay, this should be good. I take my canteen from the clip at my waist and open it up. This is filled with spring water. Took a while to find that. Honestly, it took me a while to do everything. I kind of feel bad about it, but I moved as fast as I could. Anyway, there should be enough here for a healthy first watering. Won't drown it. I pour the insides of the bottle over the leaves and plot, screwing it closed when I'm done and putting it back on my waist. That's it. That's it. That's all? I stand up, wiping sweat away from my brow. Yeah. We both look outside the circle for a while. I give her a look from my side. She's still looking out. Breathe. Okay. Step forward. She doesn't move. I leave her side and turn around. We both stare at the olive tree. Did it work? I open my mouth to ask, but close it again when I see her. She's scared. She's at the edge of the barrier and scared. Oh man, I just realized. If just touching it before hurt her so much, how did it feel when she pushed her whole hand through? She had a stone face when she did it, but... God. I can't say anything to that. I don't know what that feels like. Man. Seeing her like that, shaking with fear and panicking just thinking about moving ahead, I can feel my eyes welling up. I just try not to cry for her. She loosens up her shoulders and puts her hands over her chest. With her eyes closed, she jerks forward. Wait! Her foot passes over the line. My hand is up in the air. I wanted to stop her. I didn't want to see that pain anymore. She jerks her other foot forward, completely leaving the spot. It... She steps again, faltering. Again and again she walks to me. She lowers herself and... Just embraces me. I wrap my arms around her. Her skin warms up all over and she nuzzles her face affectionately into my neck, rubs her nose over my cheek. She just eases into me, weak. I bring up one of my hands and pet her head. I'm crying. It's okay now. I choke. It's okay, alright? She just rests on me taking away any of the nipping cold in my body. She breathes out past my ear. Thank you. I hug her a little closer. I'm sorry. I shake my head, trying not to break down. Can I just stay like this? For a little bit. You're familiar. You're strong. Y yeah, yeah, you can. She brushes her nose on me again, whispering something. I can't hear what it is. She holds me tightly and we don't say anything else. You're a surprisingly emotional lad. Are all lads like that now? It, it just really hurt looking at you, that's all. Right, right. I'm sure that it did, really. I was quite emotional myself. If Mother saw me like that, huh. I wonder if Mother's still alive. When did I last see this place from here? Has it really been forgotten? Yeah, I'd never heard of it. That's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. What was it like here? Did you like it? It was normal. Extraordinarily normal. 
so normal in fact that I had to file down my horns just to get around. What about your ears? My ears? What about them? You didn't have to hide them? No, I didn't have to. I only look fiendish with just my ears, like an unfortunate halfling. It little bothered anyone before. If it did, I'd grow my hair long. Huh. As I was saying, this town, this town, I might have liked it, once. Though when I first came here, I never would have expected the stay. Ah, yes. The boy was lost, wasn't he? You've any idea how to get back to your home? Uh, obviously not. Don't get smart, I'll help you there. Really? I can't, assure, I can't assure you when we'll find it, but I'll assure that we shall for certs. I'll take you there, I may as well. You're not going to go travel? I chuckle. This should be enough of a journey after standing so long. Hmm. We'll camp by the Eastwood Spring for tonight. You know of the one east? It's still there? Yup. Uh, at least it's probably the same one I'm thinking of. Can you fish at all? N not without a rod, no. Then I'll fish for you, but you'll have to prepare it. Can't do everything for you. Hmm. What time is it? You ask me the time? Sorry, just so out of it. Since I leaned on you earlier, you can lay on me while you sleep. I'll keep you warm. He glances at me briefly and looks pensive. He shuts his eyes. I'll do that. He opens them again, keeping their stare from me. Thank you. I smirk at him. Hmm. What should I even think? I thought this wouldn't happen. Huh? Am I actually asleep? Dreaming? If you are, that'd be weird for me. I'm glad you stayed. I laugh. I'm glad you're a fool. <laughs> really, I am. I can't say it enough. It's all right. Don't consort with any other fiends other than me. Got it. I honestly feel like this isn't real. But I know that it is. Let's go then. My mind has become so lucid since I've been freed. Bright. So bright that it nearly blinds me. But I can tell. I. I'm happy. The sun shines a different way now, different from all the ways I've seen it before. I'd thought I'd seen them all, but this one's different, much more different, pleasant. Watching it come up this morning with him resting at my chest was profoundly serene. Having him calmly there through the moonlight made it better than any other time. And now, a moor brimming with life, that's where I'm going to guide him, free of charge. And after that, who can say? The world has changed, I greatly changed. It doesn't feel at all the same. My friends have died, I can tell that from the air. Dead, and I could not wish them farewell. My kin, too, are dead. On this path, breathing fresh from the winds, I can feel these things and new things. Though fiends still roam, I know no one, alive no one, but this boy, here, I think that by him being here there is company, I want to keep with him, if only ever from afar, I want for his life to go well, and as for mine, when he's gone, I think that I'll go too, perhaps it is not the best use of the time he returned to me, but I am tired, tired, but I can stay awake a little longer.
And well, guys, that was Juniper's Knot. Or was it Jupiter's Knot? Fuck, I forget already, but... Yeah, I really like that story, and I hope that you liked it too. I guess there's not really anything else to say. It really is a beautiful little story, though. So, I'd like to thank you for watching and sticking around with me through to this point. I know it's uh, kind of long and maybe not the most interesting thing to begin with, but I just felt like I wanted to share it with you, so if you stuck around, then all the better to you. I hope you enjoyed the show, and well, I'll see you next time. Stay tuned for more. It is natural to die.